If you've ever dreamed about sending your players through an adventure at the bottom of the ocean floor, or you want to send them diving through the cold dark depths of an underground waterway, then this video is for you. Ultra realistic and surprisingly easy to make ocean and water tiles this week on Tabletop Witchcraft. Hey there and welcome back to Tabletop Witchcraft. This week we're going to dive in head first and make these awesome looking ocean tiles. Now as I was making these tiles I thought to myself, wait a minute, what about my cave tile system? I remember the scatter terrain piece that I made. It was this tile right here with this purple monster. And how many times has there been an adventure where your adventurers come across a puddle of water in this cave system and they gotta dive in to see what's at the bottom or maybe it's their way out. So I decided to turn this video not only to an ocean tile system, but an underwater cave adventure exploration where you can make these two inch by six inch freshwater tiles that your adventurers can go through uh, for the cave system as well. This video was really fun to make, some really cool new products that I'm using in it, like this super clear resin. Now, you're probably not gonna buy a huge thing of this for a video like this. I only ended up using about one cup of a old yogurt container per tile. So it really wasn't that much resin. And uh, the acrylic sheets that I used for my frame around this, I was gonna leave them in here, but at the end, I wanted to pop them off. So I used another cool product to be able to remove those. In the video, you're going to see I made the dimensions of this a little bit smaller because my initial thoughts were to leave that acrylic sheet on there. But don't worry, in the video, I'm going to give you the exact dimensions you need to make a really cool 6x6 ocean tile. Alright, if you're ready, let's go grab those supplies and let's get crafting. Okay, so we're going to start off with a sheet of acrylic and we're going to use a piece of half inch XPS foam. And we're going to use that to get the correct height. That way, in case we want to place these ocean tiles up against some foam tiles, we got the right height. Now, we need two cut at 6 inches in length and two cut at 6.25, not at 5.75. We want a little overhang because the thickness of the acrylic sheet is 1 eighth of an inch. I left it at 5.75 because I thought I was going to keep the acrylic sheets on here, but I decided to take those off at the last minute. Okay, so I'm using this saw right here, and the blade is a 20 tooth per inch blade. It cuts right through this acrylic sheet with no problem at all. And you can make some back and forth adjustments, and it doesn't have to be perfectly square, because you'll see here in a minute how we're going to attach these together. Uh, it's not really going to matter. I'm using a little bit of super glue by Gorilla, I use that to hold it in place, a little bit of accelerant to speed the process up. Once that hardens, I take a little bit more super glue and place that in the corners of all the joints just to make sure that the resin won't seep out after I poured it. Now to make sure that the base is as tight as possible, I'm gonna use the acrylic sheet frame um, on this. I'm not gonna just assume that I have a perfect square and we'll use that uh, for our base. Now this chipboard, you can see we can easily just place it right into the acrylic square once we're done. And before I do that though, in this video, I painted this up, the edges black, and I made a little bit of a, a new mistake here. I painted the whole base black and it started to warp the chipboard. So to avoid that, don't paint it. You don't need to paint these black. Uh, later on in the video, you'll see my two inch by six inch tiles. I don't even paint those. You can paint the edge black once you're all done, like you would on a diorama if you wanna do that. Now I took some green stuff and I'm making a sand dollar right now. I'm going to make a bunch of cool little things to go under the water for you to check out. A starfish, a scallop shell, we'll even add some plants. Now to do this, I'm going to take some green stuff, press it into a little circle, and using some clay sculpting tools, uh, we can add uh, the designs that we want right into the sand dollar. For the scallop shell, you want to follow that little shape right there, pinching the bottom, and you really want to be using a razor to remove the unwanted green stuff. You can see how this clay sculpting tool really kind of just smears the green stuff. You don't want that. Again, you want to use a razor. Now we can put the lines to our scallop shell in with this X-Acto, and then using a clay sculpting tool, we can define those lines a little bit more, making sure that it's wet. Now, if you've ever seen a sand dollar in real life, on a live one anyway, they're always wiggling and curling around. So you want to make sure to pick up the feet on the, 
the uh, starfish here. And for this conch shell, all I'm doing is twisting some green stuff. And don't forget, if you have some really small seashells kicking around, you can really just use those if you'd like and skip the sculpting part of this altogether. All right, now to make sure that the resin doesn't come out from around the base, I put some hot glue around this whole thing. Later on in my other ones, the other tiles that I made, I actually put the hot glue on the bottom seam, pressed it into the uh, paper there that you see on the bottom, and that was a really good way of doing this so you didn't have the hot glue in the resin. And that's just some sand and PVA glue that I mixed together and pressed that right into place. Now, here's a little crab that I made. Sorry I didn't show it in the video, uh, but now this is 24 hours later. All this stuff has cured. And initially I went with black, but then I decided, wait a minute, I should be using a white primer here because I want to go with some really bright colors for all of the, uh, the seashells here. It's not often I get to work with purples and pinks and stuff like that. And it's really going to have a lot different outcome putting this over a piece that's been base coated in white as opposed to black. Now just to show how easy this green stuff comes off of glass, I want to show this right here. And there's a lot of little, I guess, paint chips on the feet and the small fine details. I just took a toothbrush and brushed them real light and that stuff came right off. And you can see just how easy all the excess paint and green stuff comes off that glass with that razor. All right, now we need to paint the sand. And yes, we need to paint the sand. You're gonna get a much better look uh, to this sand if you paint it. I'm going with a territorial beige then a light dry brush of a sandy color and then we're going to wash it. Now another cool reason why we want to paint this is that some of that paint is going to help fill in some of those air voids on the sand helping to reduce the amount of bubbles that are going to happen regardless uh, when we pour the resin onto this piece. And that was just a little bit of Agrax Earth Shade I used for a wash. I'd recommend using a homemade wash if you're gonna do a whole bunch of these tiles. All right, now simply I'm using some hot glue to glue down all of the cool little shells and crabs and stuff that we've made. And again, you can use actual seashells if you got some kicking around. Now these plants right here, I use these and paint them in my Enchanted Forest uh, terrain video. I'll put a link up above to that. I'm cutting some really small, and I wanna glue these right into place. I'm using a little super glue here. It didn't hold the best. I'd recommend just using hot glue. And we also wanna take and vary up the greenery in here for the seaweed, so I'm using some grass tufts as well. All right, now this mold release is absolutely awesome. You know, initially I thought I was gonna leave the acrylic frame on the tile, but I got a hold of this stuff and all you gotta do is kind of buff it right into the acrylic sheet. Uh, spend a few minutes working that into the acrylic. You could actually do this before this step right here. Uh, I didn't know how well it was gonna hold with the super glue, so I did it this way, uh, but it was no issue uh, regardless, however you wanna do it. And just buff that right in, let it sit for a few minutes, then get a clean side of your Q-tip and rub it in there and you're gonna be all set. Now grab a really junk brush, because we're going to mix a little bit of resin and we're going to paint it over all the sand. This is really important. Once you've got it all in there, you're going to let that cure for uh, 24 hours. Once that's cured, you can then take the rest of your resin and dump it in here. I actually didn't do that for the first one, I just painted this on. Uh, for the remainder, I did let it cure for 24 hours and there was a huge difference in the amount of bubbles that were created um, between the two. So it was a lot less having to babysit and uh, coming back, as you can see right now, with this lighter to reduce the amount of bubbles that were coming up. I only had to do it once on the tile where I let the resin initially cure. On the one where I didn't let it cure, I had to come back like every five minutes and you know blow these bubbles up. Now you can see just how easy the acrylic sheet is coming off with a pair of pliers right here. Uh, real simple, real easy. Okay, now the cool thing when working with resin is there was a little bit of a lip that came about by having the resin poured into that frame and I didn't like it. 
you can come back and you can shave it down with a knife. You can see what I'm using right here, this Dremel tool to create our grid work. We don't want it perfectly square. We want those lines to be a little wavy. It just adds to that water effect. And it's gonna leave a little bit of a white line. With the X-Acto knife, the uh, Alpha knife, the uh, Dremel right here, it doesn't matter. Don't worry about leaving lines because we're gonna come back with a little bit more resin in just a few minutes with the sponge. And now as we rub it, it's gonna magically make all those lines disappear. It's really, really neat. And it's gonna add a really cool wavy effect to the tile, making it that much more realistic and believable that it's an underwater ocean tile. And you wanna make sure to use a nitrile glove here when doing this, not a latex glove. Okay, so now onto the freshwater tiles, my little cave diving tile. Uh, I want to make the bottom look like brown and muddy. We're going to add some really cool little details to these. And I wanted these to be like corridors, so they're 2 inches wide by 6 inches long. And all the same framework as before. You can see in the background, we're going to do a, a skeleton in one, a gold in another. And I left one of them just a muddy bottom. Now as before, we're going to take a little bit of resin and we want to paint it over the skeleton, the gold pile, and everything. Let that cure, really cure, for 24 hours. Then you can fill it up with the rest of your resin, break it from the mold, add your grid lines, and you're all set and ready to go. Okay, so I'm really happy with the way these ocean tiles turned out. A really cool, unexpected surprise that happened when I used the Dremel tool to put the grid work on here is that it leaves a reflection of the grid work on the sand underneath the tile. So it really looks like a watery uh, tile, right? It has this really cool reflection depending on how you look at it in the grid work. Now, I'm gonna be working on the next addition to my Medieval Town coming up shortly here on the channel. Uh, it's probably gonna take me a few weeks to work on that. Uh, I got some really cool custom made pieces for it. I'm super excited. So that's gonna be coming up next on the channel as well as an epic build. Now, when I say epic, I'm talking humongous. If you thought the Colosseum that I made on this channel was huge, wait till you see this video. If you're liking the videos, please leave a comment, share, and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on further videos here. And consider supporting it over on Patreon. I really appreciate anything you can do to help fund the channel and keep these videos coming right to you. All right, until next time, I'll see you around.